my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Today, the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, we have gathered once again to seek the face of God in our lives as Christians. And so the theme of our reflection for today's Mass is very simple. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and every other thing shall be added. And so, today's liturgy invites all of us to discover the priceless treasure which can give meaning and direction to our lives. The author of the book of Proverbs noted thus, Blessed is the man who finds wisdom and the one who gains insight, for she is of more value than silver and more useful than gold. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. Meanwhile, most often in the wisdom literature of the Old Testament, such as Proverbs, Psalms, Songs of Songs, Ecclesiastics, Book of Wisdom, Sirach, and others, it's closely associated with God. These books associate wisdom with God. And it says, Anyone who chose to relate with wisdom is considered to have chosen God. And so, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24, Jesus is referred to as the wisdom of God to us. And so, in the first reading from this Mass, taken from the book, the first book of the Kings, Chapter 3, verse 5, 7, and 12. We see King Solomon today in the first reading of this Mass as a clue to us who are priests, who are politicians, who are fathers and mothers, who are leaders, governors, even president and prime minister. As a king, Solomon was asked in a dream by God to ask for something, to make a demand of God. And whatever he asked for shall be granted by God because it was a free gift. In fact, we see this as God signing a blank check leaf and giving to Solomon to say, whatever you feel on this blank check that have been signed, this is what I shall grant to you. But let us go back to the scripture to, to hear the response given by this young king, Solomon. We are told, Solomon replied, Lord my God, you have made your servant king in succession to David, my father. But I am a very young man, unskilled in leadership. Your servant finds himself in the midst of these people of yours that you have chosen. A people so many in its number, which cannot be counted. Give your servant a heart to understand how to discern between good and evil. The first question that came to my mind when I read this passage of the scripture, a young man could ask God for discernment. And I say to myself, I think I'm among the category of young people in this church because I'm a young priest. 
it is true. And also to my young people also who are seated in the church with me today, I think this response given by young Solomon is something we must go back into ourselves to reflect deeply as young people. Our value as young people, our concerns as young people, our life as young people. In fact, when I made a research into the age of Solomon at the time he made this request, it was between the age 12 and 20, and he could make this kind of research and said to himself, Lord, you have given me a kingdom of my father. If we remember, David was a great king. And the kingship which David occupied was given to him by God. First of all, it was a kingdom given to God, given by God to Saul. And the son of Saul did not succeed him, Jonathan. But it was David who succeeded Saul. But it is time to give the kingdom back to a child belonging to David. And God chose Solomon. And this young man, in his wisdom, could ask for discernment to decide between good and evil. And God said to him, since you have not asked for yourself riches or even the head of your enemies, but instead, you have asked for wisdom, discernment. What happened? That which David did not even ask for was what? Given to him in addition. Dear friends in Christ, all of us, we are gathered here this morning. We listen to this reading over and over again. But the question I want to put to us is very simple. If we are given such opportunity like Solomon to ask for something right now as we are seated in the church, I tell you, you will be amazed to discover what many people will ask for. Even me, myself, maybe I will ask to be the next pope. Who knows? It is very possible. But for the parents who are here, for our fathers, they may say, Lord, make my wife so subject to me so that any time I say go, she will go. <laughs> even the, 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 the mothers in our midst may even decide to say, Lord, you see my husband. Sometimes I, can't, I don't know how to relate with him. But since you have asked me to make a request today, Lord, the only thing I want you to grant me is that any time my husband sees me, he will begin to obey everything I say. <laughs> People can go as learn to ask for things like this. But if you also ask our young people today, many of them will ask for riches. Many of them will ask God to give them money they cannot even spend while they are alive. Many of them can go as far as asking for things they may not be able to use. Because human inclination, they are very high. We have the tendency to ask God for something, even things we know on our own we cannot use. But that is human inclination. But the lesson that was taught in this reading today by King Solomon is something we must all take an example from. A young man of this age could ask for discernment to know between good and evil and how to rule the people. He did not ask for himself. He did not ask the head of his enemies. He did not ask that those who seek the ruin of his life should be killed by God. He did not ask that God, since I am so young, I want you to give me 345 years on earth. He did not ask for that. 
but he simply asks God for discernment to know between good and evil. And I said to myself, the second reading for this Mass comes alive in the person of King Solomon. It says, We know that by turning everything to their good, God cooperates with all those who love him. God cooperated with King Solomon because he knew that this young man loved him and he was ready to dedicate his life for the service of the people. Dear friends in Christ, God can see the heart of all men. Even as we are seated here this morning, it is only God that can see the heart of all of us and whatever it is that is going on within us. And so, we cannot deceive God. It is good for us to be sincere. It is good for us to be open, just like King Solomon. He opened his heart and allowed the grace of God to lead him. In fact, if you go to 1 Kings chapter 3 and follow him, you will see the wonders of God in the life of Solomon. Is it the decision he took between the two women that were dragging just a child? That is wisdom. A young man who is ready. And for me, I see that treasure in Solomon, a man who has recognized the power of God, seeking God first. And every other thing was added to his life. He had it all. And so today, dear friends in Christ, the gospel reading over and over again for Tiri Wies have been presenting us with the parables of Jesus, giving us a deeper understanding to the kingdom of God. And today, again, it says that when the crowd was gathered, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field which someone has found. I tell you, King Solomon found that treasure hidden and he sold everything, his pleasure and everything, and rushed to purchase that treasure. A, king, a treasure hidden in a field. But we cannot understand this parable proper if we do not go back so the situation that gave credence to this parable Jesus made in Palestine, it is not our modern day bank. If people want to keep money, they go to the bank to keep money. At that time, there was nothing like bank. And so the best way for people to keep treasure is to gather them in a sack, tie them up, and go to their piece of land dig a hole and then they put it and cover it because anything can happen to anybody. They can be taken into slavery. A thief can even rob the house. And so when they put that in the ground, nobody can discover it. But we are told that somebody found this treasure in a piece of land and went away, sold everything. The first question is this, this person will not be mad. He has discovered that that treasure is more valuable than whatever he has. And he goes off to sell those things to purchase that piece of land. Because when you purchase a piece of land, whatever that is in that piece of land automatically becomes what? Your own. And so the, to purchase the land. And we are told this is a comparison to the kingdom of God. Today, many of us are seated in the church. We prefer so many things more than the kingdom of God. Some people prefer riches. Some people prefer their cars. Some people prefer their bank account to the word of God. And yet the scriptures say, seek ye first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be added. Dear friends in Christ, it is not Father Damien that is saying it. It is in the Bible. We must understand the message of Christ. Let us learn to place our heart in that divine treasure. Let us learn to place our trust in the things pertaining to heaven. Let us truly seek first with our heart the kingdom of God. I tell you, whatever we are today, whatever we shall become tomorrow, it is only the grace of God. 
And so when we understand the message and the power of God leading us, we know how to behave as true Christians. Whether you are old or young, these readings for us is a challenge as a Christian, as a believer. And so God is calling us to see. God is calling us to reveal himself to us in the scripture that we understand that we are on a journey to the kingdom of God. And whatever it is that can stop us from attaining that goal, which is the kingdom of God, we must learn to put them aside. And so, dear friends in Christ, today is a great day for us. Today is a day of joy. We celebrate our lives as Christians. We celebrate the word of God coming to us on a platter of gold. Let us learn to treasure that which is more valuable, and that is the kingdom of God and all that pertains to God. Let us put aside whatever it is that have become a stumbling block to our growth, to our going to the kingdom of God. Let us embrace the truth. Let us be sincere in our worship of God. Let us turn our hearts, just like Solomon, to the needs of others. Let us truly put God first in our lives and let us allow him to take possession. It is my sincere prayer this morning that the grace of God may guide each and every one of us, that he may sustain us, that just like Solomon, that he may give us that understanding, that wisdom to discern between good and evil, so that as we choose good, we become the friends of Christ. May our journey here on earth be a successful journey, so that as we get to the kingdom of God, all of us reunited, we sing the praise, the great hallelujah, where we shall see God face to face, where we shall behold his glory. May he bless his words in our hearts. Through Christ our Lord.